Hey, welcome back to another Patreon lesson. Um, today, I'm actually going to be doing a production deconstruction of a song that I produced and engineered uh, back in 2020. I've done a couple of these on here before, um, but hadn't done in a while. Hadn't done one in a while, and um, had a song come out from a band that I worked with um, that I was really excited about, and thought I would um, do one of these production deconstructions of this song. Um, the band is a Nashville-based rock band. Um, that I've worked with quite a bit over the years. Um, they're called Gold Park. It's G-O-L-D-P-A-R-K, all one word. So definitely go check them out on Spotify and Apple Music and socials as well. Um, this particular song is called My Place, and um, it was a lot of fun. We tracked a couple songs together back in August of 2020 and um, had a lot of fun doing them, and this one definitely stuck out um, as maybe my favorite or just the one that kind of had kind of some something special to it and so I'm excited that it's finally out and then I can show you um, some of the things we did in the process that I thought were really cool. Um, so before I get into it, um, the song was mixed by my friend Andy Park um, and was mastered by Dale Becker. So just as you're hearing um, the master that I'm about to play um, of how the song turned out, um, just know that those guys added a ton to the process. And what I'll be showing you as I dig in the tracks is basically uh, set up as my rough mix that was sent to Andy as just kind of a reference. So it'll sound a little different, of course, but all the bones are there and I could show you, you know, some decisions we made in the production and tracking phase um, after we listened to the song as it turned out. Um, so what I'll do is go ahead and play that, um, the full master, um, and I'll probably put up the artwork as well so you can see that for the single. Um, and then we'll come back and jump in the session and I'll go down through the tracks and just, uh, try to keep it as brief, but yet in depth as possible. Um, maybe try to just talk more in depth about things that stick out to me. Um, but I'll definitely show you at least a little bit of everything along the way. And so without further ado, here's My Place by Gold Park. All right, now that you've got to hear the song, um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I'm gonna jump in the session now uh, that we tracked it in and just start going down the list and kind of showing you things, adding things along the way so you can kind of see how it came to fruition. So it's always fun to kind of work backwards a bit. Um, so here we are in the session. Um, so from top to bottom, this is kind of just the way that I typically organize things. I've got vocals at the top. These uh, dark blue are lead vocal stuff. The light blue are uh, harmonies and background kind of stuff. Then we've got some gang vocals, as you probably heard. There's um, a lot of things going on in that bridge, so we'll get to that here. So there's two sets of gang vocals. These orange ones are actually sang or sung gang vocals. Sung gang vocals, and then the pink ones are kind of the party, as I call it, that you heard in that bridge. So that'll be fun to get into. The or or the uh, red tracks are the rhythm guitars, the orange are the lead guitars, then the green here are uh, is the piano that you hear in the bridge, um, and it's sprinkled throughout a little bit. And then um, the light blue again is more like synth kind of land, pad land. Purple is bass, red is drums, and then uh, orange is percussion. Just so you know, I mean, it'll probably be obvious as I go down through, but just so you can kind of see what we've got here. So I think typically for me, the easiest way to start breaking down a song is starting with the foundation, which I think is the drums in this case. Um, and I'll try to remember as much as I can, but let me play some of the drums first and then uh, we'll talk about them. All right, I didn't do color coding quite as well at this point <laughs> as I do now. But yeah, let's listen uh, to some of the drums here and so you can hear those alone. And then I'll talk some about how we captured them and see what I can remember of what we set up. Let's see, that's that's the general vibe. Let's skip forward to that bridge section. So 
So yeah, I just love those drums. I think the vibe that we captured is just such a huge part um, of the identity of this song. And so just kind of, this is a perfect time to mention um, how the song came about. I, I wasn't in the writing process of it, but um, Wes and Andrew, who are two of the members of Gold Park, uh, I think wrote it together during quarantine. I think remotely actually from what i remember andrew the guitar player kind of created this demo with that kind of um piano that had that kind of bruce hornsby bounce vibe to it um with the drum groove kind of programmed and stuff and then sent it to wes and wes started writing vocals and melodies over it um but a lot of the kind of meat of the vibe was in the demo and so i really wanted to be able to capture that um in the full essence, you know, of the identity with a real drum kit. And so Kyle, the drummer in Gold Park, came in, and that's the first thing we started with is drums. Um, I can't remember, but I want to say we were using my Gretsch USA kit that I don't have anymore. I want to say it was the kick uh, from that, which is a 22 by 18, and maybe the two toms that I predominantly used, which was a 12 and a 16. And then the snare was actually um, his snare, and it was a pearl. I just can't remember what the model was, but I just know it was a pearl snare of sorts, and he had it, you know, a little bit ringy and a little bit tuned a little higher. Uh, or I'd say maybe this is like medium to medium high, uh, but it definitely had a lot of crack to it. Um, Symbol-wise, I don't remember what we were using, but it's it's nothing too specific in the symbol realm. But that's kind of what we had set up. Um, mic wise, I had a pair of stereo overheads, a mono overhead, hi hat, a crotch mic, kick in, and sub. Had a snare top, snare bottom, the two toms, a pair of stereo rooms, and then a gate mic, which I'll talk a little bit about here in a second. Um, as far as specifics on what mics I had up, to be honest, it's been a little bit too long for me to remember. I want to say, let's listen to the overheads really quick. Just click a random section. I can't tell for sure. I want to either it was Biodynamic M160s on the overheads and Telefunken M60 pencils on the rooms, or vice versa. I honestly can't tell. I th think. It might have been the Telefunkens on overheads and the M160s on rooms. The mono overhead, I think, was my Mojave MA300 uh, hi-hat. Don't remember. Knee mic was probably an SM7. Kick-in was Beta 52. Sub was my DIY sub kick. Snare top was definitely a uh, Telefunken M80. Toms uh, were either were probably 57s. And then the gate mic was a cheap Behringer C2. Um, so I think just hearing the drums as a whole was, is kind of the most, you know, is the main thing to say. Like, um, there's, I will talk a little bit about the gate mic, but really like a lot of the identity of the drums was definitely in just the way they were played and the way they were set up and captured. Um, you know, and I, I committed a few effects, uh, just light EQ and compression stuff going to tape and then all that. Um, but there's not a lot of super weird stuff. You know, this was kind of more of a classic drum fill, but with a uh, drum feel, not fill, a drum feel, but with a definitely a more modern, hefty, punchy, low end, and, you know, crackier snare than uh, what we were kind of like referencing, which was like some 80s, you know, stuff. Um, I did uh, send a snare sample here. Uh, let's see. So it looks like it was uh, uh, that sound sample. Yeah, it's kind of a crackier uh, sample from that sound. But the, one of the bigger biggest things about the drum sound on this was the gate mic. So basically the gate mic I've talked about uh, in a few other things, but basically it's putting a mic even farther away from the kit than my rooms, which in this case was, you know, the drums are in here. I usually put the, um, the stereo rooms right out in the hallway outside the room, but then I had the gate mic all the way in the kitchen, which is, you know, 15 feet out this door so it's and the kid has to kind of come around the corner and go to it so it's pretty far away and what you do is you set up a mic really far away and then after you track it you gate it uh so like key it um to the snare track so that it only opens up um when the snare is hit and it creates that 
that length and that kind of choked but roomy sound that we're so used to hearing in the 80s. So it looks like for this instance, I went and actually manually cut uh, this track, which takes some time, but I really wanted to control each hit rather than relying on a gate. So if you're going to go for it, you know, if, the, if a gate's not doing what you want, um, which it all depends on how it's captured and hit and everything, but it looks like I wanted a little more control, so I actually cleaned the track, you know, manually. But um, if I play the gate track, you'll hear that it only really hits when the snare hits. So it's very ambient and it's got a lot of crazy overtones in it, but it really makes the snare pop in the full mix. So let me play the drums a little bit and then I'll uh, mute and unmute the gate mic. So you really feel the top end airiness coming out um, of that. So that's a huge part of this kind of vibe and you know, that was a super cheap mic. So obviously, you know, the better the mic, the more ideal technically, but, um, or on paper, but really for this, you know, use, you can, it's just going to be slammed through a compressor. Um, and it's just so far away that I, I think you could use it just about anything. Um, I do tend to prefer using a condenser for that just because it has that extended top end on like a dynamic or ribbon, but you could literally use anything for it and it would sound great. You just got to find, you know, the uh, solution as far as how you want to gate it um, because if I if this track wasn't cut or I wasn't using a gate it would just sound a little bit ridiculous like out of control you know uh, overtones and stuff like that so it's specifically just to be you know on with the snare um, and maybe uh, real quick I'll do another example where I mute uh, the sample and the room so you can see how tight the kit is without those those uh, adding, you know, ambience. So you can tell the snare sounds completely different when you mute uh, the gate, the rooms, and the snare sample. It's it's still a great snare sound, but it doesn't have that explosiveness. Uh, you're really relying on the rooms and the gate mic to do that, as well as the samples kind of helping supplement some of the smack. Uh, so that's the drums. That's a huge part of it, but it's definitely more straightforward uh, in the capture and kind of vibe other than that gate mic. Um, for percussion, I won't spend much time here. It's basic, just, you know, shaker, tambourine kind of stuff. Like, here's it in a chorus. So it's basic, just swung, you know, stuff that, that goes with the feel of the drums. And I think I just tracked that after the band had left. So here's the drums and the perk together. So yeah, I muted it and unmuted it once just so you could hear it. And it does, even though it's, you know, basic stuff like well, a track like this, the percussion really helps the drums just like settle in and feel, you know, that swing um, and just add a top end presence that you get that makes a track just feel brighter, even though it's just, you know, percussion being added. It's crazy when you have a track feeling good sometimes um, and then you'll add perk and then if you mute it, it just feels like the track is like, like has a blanket over it or something. Not that perk is always um, necessary, but on a lot of tracks, it, it can really add a lot. Um, so yeah, but nothing special there with perk in bass world. Um, pretty straightforward as well. Um, the main, it's kind of a combination of real bass and synth bass. Um, this high bass track here is, I believe something that they, was actually from them and their demo. So we actually kept quite a few things that they had in their demo. You know, if somebody comes to me with a song and I basically ask for the track so I can create like scratch tracks for us to, to use for tracking from their demo if they have one, it just kind of gets the process going faster. But I'll, sometimes, you know, if something sounds good and I'm like, all we're going to be doing is trying to recreate it, you might as well just use it and then, you know, process it to be what you want if it's not quite there or whatever. So I think in this instance, I just used this synth bass track that they had and then we did track real bass. Um, when we did everything else. So um, the only kind of, I'll show you the bass, but the only kind of 
different bass thing that happened is these intro sub drops. And basically, this is just um, Andrew, the guitar player, actually played bass on this track. He he did a great job. He's not even a real, he wouldn't consider himself a bass player, but he crushed it because um, the feel of the bass was really important and he just had it locked. So, um, but yeah, I had this idea at the beginning to just do these little boom, boom, kind of like you feel this rumble, almost like you're about to watch a band play and you just feel that energy coming through. So he literally just tracked a few things and we just placed them where we wanted them. But yeah, I just love that sound. I don't know if you can hear, there's like a plane or something going over. Um, but yeah, I, I just think that little touch adds something that you feel, it's like you feel something coming, like that anticipation in the intro. Um, so yeah, the uh, synth bass is only in in like the intro when the band comes in and the choruses and it sounds like this. So yeah, pretty straightforward. It looks like I probably added some fuzz and reverb. Here's how it came in. So yeah, I just adding a little more sizzle to it with the fuzz thing with the Logic pedal board and then just some depth from the little plate. Um, so we tracked a, a DI and an amp for this sound. Here's the DI and then I'll mute the DI and let the amp play. So yeah, I think the DI was just hitting my Heritage uh, 1073 style pre, and then I think we tracked the amp part through a matchless. It was probably Andrew's uh, Spitfire amp. Um, the the real like the cool part about the bass uh, in this song is when it comes in on um, the first half of the bridge. So it's this part. So it just feels like, even alone, like I feel like that's groovy. But then when you put that with the drums and the perk and it comes in together, man, it just feels so good. So yeah, and then originally this bridge was only that long and then it went right back into the chorus, but I had the idea of like, man, this bridge just feels so good. I feel like we, I want it to happen at least one more time. And I had a vocal idea that we'll get to that kind of helps the bridge not feel like we're literally just repeating the same thing, but it actually has a dynamic, you know, arc or build. Um, so I was like, man, what if we did the high bass, you know, on the first half and it's real staccato, like stop and start. And then on the second half, it just drops down real low and is like super rumbly with the same kind of notes, but just it ringing out. So you hear the bass drop down in that second half. I love that little stop, but boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So, drums and bass just locked on this song feels so good. So yeah, that pretty much covers bass. Um, let me play the a chorus with the uh, synth bass in as well. So yeah, that's what we got so far. Um, what should we jump into next? Let's do guitars, maybe. So um, there's some cool guitar parts. The rhythm tracks are pretty straightforward. It's kind of just chords um, going on. Let me play maybe. And, it, and I think, yeah, it looks like uh, the rhythm guitar is kind of only in the choruses in the intro. So same thing, same spots as the synth bass. And it's just kind of you know, making those uh, sections lift, but the uh, the verses and the down parts kind of lean on the keys to, to drive it forward. So um, I don't remember what amp we were using for this. Let's see. 
Okay, that I think maybe this was a, a jazz chorus. Um, it's the one with the two tens, not the OG one with the two twelve speakers. I think this is a two ten jazz chorus, and um, very chorusy and wide and all that good stuff. And then I think we did a high octave version. So yeah, just nice and airy, kind of got that 80s feel. And then whatever this is, I don't remember, Guitar Rise. So yeah, that's just a little riser to help, you know, uh, the choruses drop in. Um, so no big deal, we just, just probably overdubbed like a single string kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's it for the rhythm guitars. The lead guitars, we'll just go through these individually because I'll need a little reminder of these, um, but there's some cool parts in here. So here's the first track that looks like it happens only in the courses as well. I was turning on and off this plugin, this degrader plugin. I don't know if I committed that to mix or not. I'm honestly not sure. Um, and I don't know what amp this was. I want to say it was maybe the Matchless, but it could have been. I think he had a Tyler Princeton amp here too. I don't think we used that though. I think this is probably the Matchless. That's the main lead line. Then we've got a, a whammy situation here. Let's see. So yeah, that's doing that very soaring uh, 80s kind of thing with the wham. It's just sucker for that kind of thing. Um, so that kind of goes along with those with the uh, lead line, sorry, and the chords. Let me play all these together. <laughs> So yeah, obviously too, like when I hear this back now, I'm like, they don't feel great together because this was just the rough. So things weren't really put where they should have been. It's just, you know, in a rough mix, you're just kind of representing the, th the song. You're not really trying to like find the perfect spot in the stereo field. I probably could have done that a little bit better, but Andy crushed it. So it's all good. Uh, here's another lead part. Uh, it looks like for verse two. So yeah, that obviously I uh, took off these plugins and put them back on. It was tracked with some delay, but it looks like I added some more and then a panning effect. So it kind of has this like back and forth stutteriness. And then I think we tracked the, the LG2 wonky, I think is just like a weirder version of the same thing, like doubling it. So yeah, that was definitely us uh, playing with a delay or something. I think maybe it was his DL4, line six, one of those green delays. I think we were playing with that while he was playing the lead line to create all those weird sounds. But I love that part in verse two. Um, we'll come back to that in a second and play them all together. Uh, there's a little walk down that happens into the choruses. So it's like as that uh, rhythm guitar is, is rising up, this is going down. So it's kind of a low passed thing. So these two together, you can see how they kind of work together. So that's a nice little handoff between the rhythm guitar and the lead guitar. Um, on the bridge, there's some really cool guitar stuff going on too. So here's the main layer.
So, okay, it's not the main lead guitar layer, but it's the layer that goes through the whole bridge, and it doesn't even almost sound like keys, or it just sounds miscellaneous. It doesn't really sound like guitar, but it's just him plucking with his fingers, and then we were, I think we were using the DL4 again for kind of a weird or, like, modulated thing. And then as you can see with the plugins I had, it's kind of feels like it's, like, going in a circle. I think it's just painting, but it kind of feels like, to me, like it's going in a circle kind of motion. And then there's some other layers that come in on the bridge. Uh, this is kind of the main like lead layer that comes in on the back half of the bridge um, and then goes through the, uh, the last chorus as well. So again, adding Logic pedal board to fuzz it up. Again, I don't remember if I committed that or not. I probably did. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like sometimes I love tracking like an amp, but then in the track, I want the guitar to have this kind of fizzy bite to it. And so putting like a pedal on top of that is sometimes the move. Um, then there's the stab track. that oscillates um, so that's creating some texture there in the bridge there's this reverse thing that goes back into the chorus so that's just like a pog uh, chorus layer that's been reversed to kind of act as a riser and then there's uh, the guitar crash uh, track here which again is just kind of like a pog, like 100% wet, octave up, kind of stab kind of thing. So here's all these bridge guitars together. Let's play it from the back half. So yeah, sounds a little bit crazy alone, but in the track it's really cool. Um, let me play, I think I'll play, yeah, I'll just play several sections with what we've got so far. So we've got, here, I'll just go here to my buses. This will make it easier. We've got drums, perk, bass, rhythm guitar, and lead guitar. Let's start with the second verse, because I love that, that weird kind of uh, lead that comes in on the back half of the verse. Yeah, that's uh, back half of verse two in the chorus. Let me show you, uh, let's play some of the bridge with all those instruments together. Yeah, I think now after hearing that, hopefully all those guitar parts make a little more sense in the context of even just the rhythm section being in. So yeah, that's all the guitars. Um, lots of cool little textures. Um, and I love I love like these types of parts because there's not like one guitar thing that goes through the whole song. Like each section kind of has its own thing happening, which I really like. Um, next, let's do uh, Keys Land. Um, so let's start with this piano. So there's a couple little things um, that are like sprinkled throughout the song and then the main piano happens on the bridge. Um, originally, the song actually had piano throughout the entire thing. It was like the piano was driving the whole thing and then kind of uh, in the mixing phase there was kind of like a last minute decision to nix the piano in the main part of the song and then just let it be like 
let the identity of it shine through just for that bridge mainly. But then we left, you know, some of the sprinkly parts um, that weren't, you know, main parts. And then there's some, like, organ tracks that became the main, like, kind of pad or, you know, bed beneath, like, the verses and stuff. Um, so this piano was tracked by my friend Andrew Capra. Um, and this was heavy during, like, quarantine. So, you know, we were tracking here and we're safe here, but, like, Andrew was still doing everything remote, um, not in person. So basically what we did is we just got, got on like a FaceTime or a Zoom or something. And then he used Audio Movers, which is like a streaming uh, service. If you don't know about it, I won't get too much into it because I don't know a ton, but I've used it several times. And basically you can stream your DAW's audio to somebody else and they can hear it exactly as they're hearing it. Or you can hear it exactly as they're hearing it on their system in like real time. You know, there's a tiny little delay, but like, you know, Andrew had his dog going and tracking piano and we were hearing out of my speakers the exact same thing he was hearing out of his speakers at his place. So very cool and thankful for that during especially that time. Uh, but Andrew has a Yamaha, uh, some kind of Yamaha Grand at his house. I want to say it's a C7. I don't know that for sure. I don't know much about pianos, but I want to say it's a C7. It's a beautiful piano and He's got a wide open space with like um, really tall ceilings to track it. And so uh, we asked him to do that on the song and it turned out so, so good. I knew we needed like a real piano and I didn't want to rely on like a virtual, you know, one. And so he crushed it um, and he captured it really well. He had a pair of 414s um, close, like stereo miking it. Um, he had a 67, I think that was a mono mic which I don't think we used. I think we used it for some of the overdubs, but not the main piano. And then uh, ask him to capture the room, which I remember him saying, like, I usually don't do that, so I'll have to see if I have enough, like, mics or lines to do it. And he got back, and he was like, hey, like, I actually only have, like, some 57s to do it, but I can try it if you want. And I was like, yeah, just just throw up whatever you think is you can, and capture the room as best as you can and don't worry about it like we'll we'll you know add it later if we need to with like reverb or whatever but it came back great like the 57 sounded great and his room just sounds awesome and open and airy so it, it really worked it was funny even though he i don't think he thought it was going to sound good it sounded really good um so yeah let me play the bridge because this piano is just i don't need to loop that actually um this piano is just such a special part of the song and it really shines obviously in the bridge so um, let me mute this track and let you hear just um, the main piano track. So it's the close, which is the uh, 414s, um, and the room, which is the 57s. So yeah, it sounds so good, um, and it looks like I probably missed a couple of fades there that uh, Andy probably had to deal with. I'm much better about <laughs> making sure my tracks are clean, which I think I did it pretty well back then, but I'm, I'm so much more particular about making sure my tracks are clean nowadays. <laughs> um, that's what happens though when you go back and visit revisit something you did over a year ago, and you're like, oh, I didn't used to be as good at that um anyways that's the main piano um there's this uh overdub that happens in verse one it's this little bouncy little twinkly thing so it kind of just sounds like a loop and it looks like i did use the mono mic which is the 67 for that and that's on the right side of the mix, I think even in Andy's version. But I love that little part. Uh, it's a small detail, but it really adds something special to the back half of that verse one. Uh, there's some fluttery stuff at the end.
So yeah, I turned on and off that crystallizer, which is helping the stereo image of it, and it's adding all those twinkly textures. So this was just like, um, I think we asked Andrew just to track any little random things that he thought might be, could be used, you know, for extra layers in the song. And so I used that on the last chorus to kind of add some top end, uh, and it's it only happens there, so it's kind of giving you some extra sauce on that last chorus. And then the last piano track is just in the intro, there's some real high little twinkly stuff similar to that end part, but just in the uh, beginning and with a little bit different processing on it. Man, that part is like so beautiful, like just listening back to those I'm so happy with what he did on the song. Um, it just added so much and it just feels human and I just love it. Um, the only other piano track is this piano vocal reamp, which I'll probably get to when we talk about vocals. Cause basically what I did in the bridge to make it feel like more like Wes tracked it as he did the vocals is I reamped the uh, piano and the vocal together in my room. And it's not an amazing sounding reamp, but it did help kind of just marry the two a bit more um so yeah let's play that bridge now um with andrew's piano in there with the rhythm section sorry let me solo these all right so i'm gonna play the bridge um we've got now the uh, drums perk bass guitars and then andrew's piano here So yeah, that's all the piano stuff. I'm super happy with that. I love, I, I need a real piano. I don't play piano necessarily, but I need one so I can have one to track when I <laughs> when I need it. Um, I just need more space for that, which I don't currently have. Um, okay, let's jump down into the like synth pad organ stuff. Um, we'll just go through these. This is an organ that's happening in the chorus, and this is the one that was originally in the song. So yeah, it's very ambient and kind of has a lot of like uh, artifacts in it because it's pitch shifted a little bit and a little alter void. Um, so I didn't want it to sound too, you know, it's a it's not a real organ, so I just didn't want it to sound too like programmed or just generic. So there's some weird stuff to make it a little messy. Uh, there's a pad. These these happen in the choruses. Both of those, I believe, were sent from the band. I think those are in the demo. Maybe, yeah, I think this one might have been too. Yeah, so I remember now, we kept a lot of the like key stuff they had in the demo. It just felt good, and we didn't need to replace it. So that's that, that uh, intro pad that starts the song and then there's a side chain pad here
so that goes throughout kind of the first half of the song and then comes back in on the second chorus and then on the end as well. And then these organ tracks are the ones that were added um, like after the fact um, when it was already in mix. So much darker than the other organ, it goes in the verses and it's got some you know, stereo movement and then that same kind of sound happens in the outro. That one's just got some like crystallizer or something on it to add those those like twinkly top end sounds. So let's let's play all the uh, the keys together. Maybe end of verse one in the chorus. And this is not including piano, of course, because it's not in during this section. But just like the uh, pads and organs and stuff. So yeah, lots of cool, they're all kind of just adding up to be one big bed of sound. Um, they're not really meant to be, you know, parts that stick out a ton um, on their own. So let's play what we've got so far. It might be easier just to mute the vocals at this point instead of soloing everything else. Yeah. So now we've got basically all the instruments, the full band, just no vocals. Let's hear a chorus or maybe end a verse into the chorus. And I'm hearing vocals. What did I not? Oh, there we go. Here we go. I'm gonna go back and play the back half of that verse because I really love that dum bum bum ba dum ba dum that Andrew did. Yeah, I love the amount of space that happens in the verses. It just feels so open. You really just get to lean on the groove of the drums and everything else kind of stays out of the way and lets the vocal take the spotlight. So yeah, that's all the instruments. Um, let's get into vocals now. Let me unmute things that need to be unmuted. Um, so as far as the lead vocal, obviously it's pretty straightforward. Um, Wes is a really great singer and so getting great takes from him is usually really easy. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on here that I have just for the rough, but I most likely took almost all of it off besides maybe like the SSL channel to send to Andy and let him do effects and all that stuff. And then there's like logic blanket pitch correction on here just because at this time I didn't even have Melodyne or any kind of legitimate tuning software. So I just used, but I mean, if, if a vocal is where it needs to be and you just want to nudge it a little bit, the logic pitch correction is fine like it if a vocal gets weird in that it's probably not the right take anyways but yeah now i use you know melodyne and auto-tune and all that good stuff but so um it definitely got fine-tuned a little bit more by andy because at this time he was uh tuning vocals as well as mixing um but yeah i'll play just a little bit of the the uh the lead vocal by itself here um and then there's a double texture so I'll, maybe i'll just play those together and I, suddenly I forget my place And you, you're telling me it's not up to fate No, I can't believe when you say that there's no reason away That's part of a chorus. Let me play the second verse. I'm never getting over this fence of wire It keeps 
cutting me open and it swallows me up in out again have I said too much my friend yeah sounds really great Andy made it sound better um but yeah I mean it's when you've got a really great vocalist with a good identity and they're singing with conviction, it's like, it's kind of hard to mess it up. Uh, I think the mic on him for this was a Mojave MA300 that I have that I reach for when I want that kind of extended top end uh, sound. And then on the bridge, let's listen to the lead vocal on the bridge. Can you hear me, love? I'm so far I'm lost and I'm broken and there's something that I'd like to say There was a time when I would never stay But you all I run to cause baby I am not the same no. So yeah, sounds really cool, a little bit different effects uh, vibe for the bridge But I didn't, once again I didn't commit those, I'll let Andy do his own thing but yeah, lead vocal sounds so good. Um, Wes crushed it, made it really easy. Um, so yeah, that's the lead vocal. Um, maybe I'll play that with the rest of the thing since I'm kind of adding things as we go along here. Mute the BGVs and the gangs and the party vocals. Let's play a chorus to start. So good. I love the phrasing in that second verse in the back half. Um, and then, oh, this would be a good time to talk about that track I skipped over in the pianos, the reamp. So let me show you what that sounds like. It's it's supposed to sound a little bit, um, not crappy, <laughs> but just kind of like humble and very just like human and kind of gritty and just, yeah. So obviously it's pretty lo-fi and I'm saturating it. So it's like, I don't know. I, th I just thought everything was hi-fi. So I wanted kind of that reamped, like, you know, scratchy sound underneath it. I'm so far So yeah, that along and let's play the bridge uh, with everything else in other than uh, the backgrounds and the gang vocals. Um, you might, so yeah, so it feels great. You might notice there was something playing that you haven't heard yet, which is this intro vocal loop. And I didn't realize because it was, I have it in the background vocal section, but it's actually being bust to the keys bus, which is confusing. I don't know why I did that, but yeah, it's, it, it's like a vocal sample kind of thing. Um, but it kind of sounds like a keys thing. So I guess that's why I bust it to the keys, but, uh, this was also a part of their demo. It sounds so cool. Honestly, don't even know where they source that. I want to say they use like some of the output plugin stuff, but I could be wrong. But it's very vibey in that bridge. And there's this, I think this, yeah, same situation, this A track. So, okay, it's really small, but it goes in the choruses. So that just hits on the snare and the choruses. So, but it adds a nice little pop and little bloom on the snare um let's move into the bgvs um it's basically just you know harmony stuff and there's not a ton there's like a high a low and then a low octave double kind of thing so let's just play that in the chorus I suddenly i forget my place and you so yeah and then um once again like I think we had uh, Andy tune those a little bit. I just had the, the logic pitch correction on it. Um, let me play those up under the lead vocal. They're just kind of, you know, boosting it up a little bit, basically. There's meant to be texture more than anything. And I suddenly I forget my place And you 
You're telling me it's not up to fate No, I can't believe when you say that there's a reason away So yeah, pretty basic background stuff. Nothing too special, but it definitely helps. Um, okay, the last thing and one of the most fun things on this song was the gang vocals that happen in the bridge and a little bit in the last chorus. So the way these are split up, because obviously at this point I wasn't very good at labeling either. They're just all la labeled gang vox, but we've got them split into the orange section and the pink section. And there's obviously a lot of tracks. Um, I think um, I actually consolidated these to stereo files before sending, because at this time I was like, when I got to the end of, of a production, I'd leave one session as my rough mix section, session and then I'd have another session for like file bouncing I don't that's just the way I did it then um so that's why you still see all these this was like the rough mix section uh, so I keep saying section instead of session but uh I, this is the kind of thing where you want to consolidate these into a single stereo file with the ba with the balance you want before sending to a mixer like the mixer doesn't need to have you know that many tracks to like try to balance just like that's should be probably part of the producer's job, which I, I did. It's just not in this session. It's in the other one. Um, okay, so these gang vocals come in on the bridge, and I don't remember exactly how the idea came to be, but I just remember, you know, feeling the bridge, and I think it only had the lead vocal, like the gang vocals weren't a part of it, and I had this idea of, like, you know, I was like, man, it's got, like, that kind of, like, gospel-y, like, R&B feel with the groove and everything, like... What if we kind of had like a church choir vibe, but without going full like on the nose with that idea? Because I knew that wouldn't quite fit with just the the band, just their rock band, and it just I knew if we went too far with the idea, it would it could get a little cheesy and just feel inauthentic. So I was like wanting to find a way to kind of pull some of that idea, but keep it Gold Park. Um, and even when we did kind of create it, I remember initially the guys were a little bit skeptical. They were like, this is very cool. We're just unsure in the moment if it's like us or not. And so I was like, well, it's fine. Like, let's just do it. And then on the back end, if we want to mute it, we can. But I was very much hoping they wouldn't because it's very cool. And luckily they were digging it after we you know, got to mixing and all that stuff. So we kept it. Um, but yeah, I think it makes the bridge really special. Um, and so I had the idea of like, okay, there's the gang vocals. Um, are we going to hire some people to come in? Are we going to just try to do it ourselves? How are we going to do this? And I decided that just between me, Wes, and Andrew, um, we would just try to make it sound huge ourselves in this room, which is a dead room. So I was like, we're going to have to track a lot of layers, move around the room, you know, get far away from the mic, do crazy stuff just to make this sound convincing. And so the orange uh, section is the actual sung parts. Like it, it mirrors like the lead vocal, but I had the idea for it to happen phrasing wise, like a bar behind. So it's like call and response, but not like lead vocal, BGV, lead vocal, BG. It was more like the lead vocal starts and then they just kind of like trail behind it at the like, but you'll see like, it's like a waterfall kind of effect. Like it just trails like a bar behind it and I don't know, I don't even know what made me think of the idea, but I'm really happy with the way it came out. So basically, all these tracks are me, Wes, and Andrew just singing like uh, unison and harmonies, but in no super specific order, just kind of do something different on every take. And it added up to be uh, these. Let me solo these and play them first. Oh, this should not be sold. There we go. Okay, so just the sung harmonies. Sorry, I had these muted. Now, let's hear them. There was a time that I would never stay. That I would never stay around you, around you. You all I run to, cause baby, I am not the same. And so as you can hear, there's like a space behind. I'm just using this Valhalla thing to create space. So here's what it sounds like without um, the kind of reverby space behind it. So this is literally three people. There was a time that I would never stay. That I would never stay around you, around you. You all I run to, cause baby, I am not the same. So like... It sounds like a nice stack, but it's funny when you just listen to one, you can really hear that it's only three people. 
But I would never stay around you, around you. You all I run to, cause baby, I am not the same. So like there's one and let me click another random one and just see. I would never stay around you, around you. You all I run to, cause baby, I am not the same. And it's funny with these, like it doesn't matter if somebody's like voice kind of cracks or it's not perfect. We did kind of like purposely let Wes's voice come through the strongest just because he has the strongest voice and it'll meld with his lead vocal. And me and Andrew are kind of like tagging along behind him a little bit as far as volume and confidence. Um, but when you stack them all up, it really works. And it's just about like, you know, doing different things, moving around the room. Some of them are in unison, some of them are octave up, some of them are harmonies, and it creates that that kind of stack. So let me play these against the um, the lead vocal first alone, just the vocals, and then I'll put the band in. Just it's just so you can really see the way they play off of each other. So you'll hear that kind of like the gang vocals following behind the lead vocal as I talked about. There was a time, there was a time that I would never when stay. I would never stay. But you all are run to cause baby I am not the same So at first it's a little bit like whoa but then yeah in the track it just feels good for instead of them singing right on the lead vocal all the gangs they kind of just tag along right behind which I thought was just a more unique way to do it. Um, so that is that and then the really fun part is these pink tracks which are like what I called the party vocals. And so I had the idea of like, okay, we've got the like sung stacks or whatever, but we need it to feel like just in a room with a bunch of people and just it more like, I don't know, not community, but just more um, exciting and just in the moment feeling. Um, and also thinking about how it would feel live when they play this. So basically we just did like, I don't know how many tracks this is, like 12 to 15 tracks of me, Andrew, and Wes again, just like doing ridiculous things in the room. And some of them, some of us are singing very like nonchalantly and are yelling. Some of them like we're like hitting things like percussion in the room. Some of them like we're just wooing and yelling and doing all kinds of dumb stuff. But it really adds up to be like the feeling of a lot of people in the room, like with the kind of choiry thing. So I'm just gonna go through and like solo some of these alone just cause it's hilarious how like silly they sound and then I'll put them together and then I'll put them with the gang vocals and then I'll put them with the lead and then I'll put it with everything. So here we go. I'm just gonna go randomly through these. So dumb. All right, let's go through some more of these. Lots of voice cracking going on, as you can tell. <laughs> Okay, and then those those ones at the end, I just started filtering through them. The ones at the end is we wanted specifically Wes to sing some higher stuff that sounds like it was more in the moment during it. So that's what those last couple were. So it sounds stupid, but then when you put them all together, it kind of sounds like a party or something going on. Never 
And I'm glad we had somebody that can sing super high and in that style, aka West, to make it feel a little bit more convincing. Because <laughs> me and Andrew definitely couldn't do that, or I'm just going to speak for us and say we couldn't. Okay, so here's the gang stacks of the sung parts with the party vocals. Let me get a little bit into it. All right, so pretty crazy. Let me put it with the lead vocal and then I'll put everything in. There was a time when I would never stay. But you all are run to, cause baby, I am not the same. And there was a time when I would never stay. Cause you all are run to, cause baby, I am not the same. At all. So, yeah. Not too bad for three dudes in a room that's like the tightness of like a booth to make it sound like a, I don't know, like a church or something. Um, but yeah, that was super fun to do. And of course, it's one of those things in the moment when you're doing it, you feel kind of silly. But then you listen back and you're like, oh, works pretty well. Um, so yeah, that's everything. Um, maybe I'll play the bridge uh, one more time and let it loop a little bit and just add things along the way because the bridge is definitely my favorite part and I love just hearing how all these you know things come together so I'll start it out with what I just left off with like all these vocals and then I'll add some of these sound designy things and then bring bass and drums in and then by the end I'll just let it all kind of play together there was a time when I would never stay but you So yeah, I still to this day, like I've listened to that part so much and it still just hits me in a certain way. It's just like weird to think that that was all created in like this room, which is like, I don't know, like 12 by 15 or something. It just definitely sounds to me, you know, like it was recorded in a bigger space or just with way more people. And I'm so I'm super proud of what we created with the vibe of the song as a whole and especially that bridge. So yeah, um, I think that's everything for my place. Um, I had so much fun, you know, recording this song and working on it with the guys and just as much fun revisiting. I hadn't been in this session since last year, so it was fun getting to go back through and kind of remind myself of all the, the things we did on it. Um, but yeah, hopefully I kind of covered all the bases. Um, if there's anything super specific about something I talked about that you want to know more about, if I can remember, I will gladly uh, answer those questions. Um, as I said in the beginning, please go check out Gold Park. They've got other songs out um, that I also had the honor of working on, and I'm definitely not telling you just to go um, check them out just because I worked on them because they're doing a lot of a lot of great things um, with with or without me involved, and um, I'm excited to see like you know where their journey takes them, and I just super believe in what they're doing, and um, they're great guys. So go check them out. Thanks again to Andy uh, Park and Del Becker for bringing this one to the finish line. And um, I'll see you next time.